Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorbani Pacchari Me Nirvise Sasunyavadi Pastyat Yade Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pe Vacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudev Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Panchatattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam so I offer my obeisances to Krishna who appeared in five features as a devotee, an expansion of a devotee, an incarnation of a devotee, as the pure devotee and as the devotional energy. So here we have the devotional energy that is Gadadhar Handit. He is Shakti Tattva, and, but his identity is actually uh, a great personality in the spiritual world <laughs> and we can read one verse from the Gora Gona Dipika which says the incarnation of love was previously the queen of Vrindavan Radharani is now the beloved of Gora named Sri Gadadhar Pandit Sarup Dhammadar himself indicated that Gadadhar was Rajas, goddess of fortune, the Lakshmi, who was previously the beloved of Shamsundar in Vrindavan. She has today become the goddess of fortune and love for Gora and is known as Sri Gadadhar Pandit. Lalita, who was also known as Anuradha, is Radha's closest friend and confidant. She has also entered into Gadadhar, as was shown in the play Chaitanya Chandrodaya. So that's from Gorad Gurudesh Dei Pika, but Kavi Raj, Kavi Kani, Kavi Kanapur. So um, this is a little bit about who Gadadhar is. Another verse, Gadadhar Pandit Prabhu Nija Shakti. Tamsam Bharacharane Mora Sahasra Pranati. Gadadhar Pandit and others are the Lord's own energies. I pay thousands of obeisances at their feet. And that's spoken by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Swami, as written in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So God, Gadadhar Pandit appeared just practically. Well, we see two months, not even two months after Lord Chaitanya appeared. They, they appeared in the same year. So Lord Chaitanya is about a month and a half to two months older than Gadadhar. And uh, Gadadhar appeared in order to assist the Lord in his transcendental pastimes. The life of Gadadhar is interesting, and there is many points that describe his early part of his life when he was with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was known as a scholar in Navadvip. He was Nimai Pandit. One time Gadadhar, this is before Lord Chaitanya, actually revealed himself for who he was. He was just the arrogant scholar of and sometimes the devotees didn't know who he was, but they were attracted to him. So they asked him one time, give a definition of liberation. Actually, Nimai Pandit was asked many times questions. And this time, Nimai, Lord Chaitanya, asked Gadadhar to give a definition of liberation. 
And Gadadhar, knowing that Lord Chaitanya was coming from the Nayak philosophy, he answered according to that philosophy and said that liberation consists consisted in the final absolute eradication of all miseries. Nimai then very carefully dismantled that argument and showed how it was inadequate. And when he did, it was a brilliant display of knowledge on how he took apart Gadadhar's answer based on Nayak, which is given in Nayak directly. <laughs> So that everyone was amazed by the scholarship and the ability of Lord Chaitanya, who was hidden as in the form of Nimai Pandit, to speak such interesting knowledge. Yeah. When Lord Chaitanya came back from Gaya, he started to exhibit, after meeting his spiritual master, Ishwar Puri, he started to exhibit ecstatic symptoms of love of God. And then he started to reveal his mood of devotion. And this attracted the devotees towards him. And gradually, a whole, a whole uh, congregation of devotees started to formulate around now who once was Nimai Pandit, now he has become, you know, uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. No, no, actually, he became Vishwambar. He was given the name Vishwambar. But now he's exhibiting ecstatic love. So one time, Lord Chaitanya, and of course, Sachi Mata, she was always disturbed to see her son in this situation of ecstasy. Sometimes she couldn't understand it. <clears throat> and in his ecstasy, the Lord didn't explain anything. And she would sometimes take him to different Kavirajas to find out why is he acting like he's acting? Is, is he, so, he has some kind of ailment. Maybe it's some kind of uh, what they call a disorganized wind in the body. We know that is epilepsy in the modern terminology. And uh, the doctors gave different advice, but nothing worked. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't work because Lord Chaitanya didn't have any diseases. Disease was love of God. And then one time <clears throat> when uh, Gadadhar was with Lord Chaitanya, uh, Lord Chaitanya started to go into ecstasy, calling out to Krishna in different ways. And then Gadadhar saw what was happening and he said, actually be patient, be patient, my Lord, because Krishna is sitting within your heart. And then the Lord, when he heard that, he grabbed na his nails and with his hands, he dug into his chest, trying to open his heart to see the Lord. We have that example where Sri Hanuman did that also when he heard that Lord Ram was sitting in his heart along with Sita Devi. So Lord Chaitanya acting in the same way. And when Gadadhar saw that, he said, my Lord, my Lord, please be patient, be patient. Krishna is coming, Krishna is coming. And Lord Chaitanya started to relax and become peaceful. Ma, Sachi Mata was there to witness that. And she said, oh, Gadadhar, please don't ever leave my son. You are the only one who can control him. This is, uh, their love. One day, Gadadhar was there and Lord Chaitanya started to call out, Father, Father, Pundarik, my dear Father, Pundarik, my dear Father. None of the devotees had heard this word Pundarika before. They were thinking, who is that? And then Lord Chaitanya said, soon there will be a great personality who will come into, come into Navadweep. And then everyone was wondering, finally, one day Pundarik Vidyanidhi appeared. Now, Pundarik Vidyanidhi was actually uh, an incarnation of Vishabhanu, the father of Srimati Radharani. And now he's appearing, but he is dressed in very luxurious clothings with various types of makeup. 
fragrant oils in his hair, hair combed in a very, what we say, handsome way. He would chew red betel nut and smile. And uh, he had many servants and assistants and he lived in a very nice opulent building when he was staying in Mayapur, I'm, I'm sorry, when he was staying in Navadweep. So Lord Chaitanya said to Gadadhar, he said to Mukunda, he said to Mukunda, Mukunda, take Gadadhar and let him meet Pundarik. He is staying in this place. So Gadadhar was interested, so they went. Now Gadadhar is so simple, he's so peaceful, very respectful, renounced. <clears throat> He's the kind of person who is very meek, very humble, very affable, very agreeable, doesn't like to argue, get into difficulties. He's always peaceful. That is Gadadhar. So now he's in the presence of Pundarik Vidyaniti and Mukunda is there. Now he's seeing Pundarik Vidyaniti. And Gadadhar's mind is becoming a little confused. This is a great devotee. He looks like an ordinary materialist. He has so many decorations. He's surrounded by opulence. And he looks like he's infatuated with himself because Pundarik would sometimes put a mirror in front of his own face and look in the mirror and smile. <laughs> So Gadadhar was bewildered. But Mukunda could sense that Gadadhar was not understanding Pundarik Vidyaniti, so he started to chant one verse, and I'll read the verse that Gadadhar chanted. It's from the third canto, second chapter, verse number 23. And it goes, and this is verse spoken by uh, Vidura, I think. Oho bakiyam stalakam kutam jigasam sapadu yad apyat sadvi lebe gatam dartri uchitam tatonyam kamvai dalulam sharanam vrajema. Translation How truly amazing! The sister of Bakasura, the evil of Putana, was sent on a mission to kill Krishna. Despite her evil intentions, Krishna drank the Kalakuta poison that was mixed with her breast milk and awarded her the position of a wet nurse as Ambika Kilimba in Gokul. Is there anyone else I can take shelter of whom is more merciful than Krishna? So when he recited that verse, Pundarik Vidyanini went mad. He started out calling out Krishna's names in ecstasy. And then he started to act in the very, he fell to the ground. And then he got back up and he started calling out Krishna's names. He was pulling his clothes. He was ripping them. All his servants were trying to somehow or other calm him down, but they all were unable to. He started to take the things in the room and throw them in different ways. And this ecstasy lasted for six hours. Gadadhar is watching Mukundas feeling, now Gadadhar will understand. So after six hours, finally, Pundarik Vision Easy comes back to external consciousness. He sees what happens. He's embarrassed. He's trying to somehow or other hide from the fact that he went into ecstasy, but it was obvious. Gadadhar realized as this was happening that he had committed an offense in his mind by doubting the spiritual power of Pundarik Vidyaniti. And therefore he was thinking what to do. I must apologize or do something to, to atone for my wrong thinking of this great personality. And then 
he said to Mukunda, he said, Mukunda, I wish to take initiation from Hundarik Vidyaniti. I want to become his disciple. Mukunda communicated that information to Pundarik Vidyaniti. When Pundarik Vidyaniti said, oh, it is such a great fortune that anyone would have such a wonderful and advanced person as Gadadhar Pandit as their, as their disciple. So he was so glad and he immediately accepted Gadadhar Pandit. And this is interesting because Pundarik Vidyaniti was the father of Srimati Radharani, is the father of Srimati Radharani, and Gadadhar Pandit is Srimati Radharani herself. And so uh, father and daughter come, become reunited with as guru and disciple. We can philosophically speculate that many times in our present life, we come in contact with persons who we have been with in other lives, sometimes in a family situation, sometimes as enemies, sometimes as friends, sometimes as eternal associates, and sometimes as guru and disciple. Sometimes the roles are switched. But we know that by the laws of the material energy, people who are attracted to each other or have some relationship to each other or whose karma is very similar, again, reappear in the next life in different forms, again, to interact with each other. <laughs> Even enemies, like you might have a very strong enemy in one life and that enemy will come back in the next life and again, you'll take up the position of being an enemy with that same person again. And sometimes those enemies become family members. <laughs> so. Uh, this is actually recorded that sometimes, even though one is a, an en enemy in a previous life, they come back as family members in the next life and they continue their enmity towards each other. Sometimes they're sisters or brothers or something. Something like that. So this is how it works. So here we have the example of Pundarik Vidya Nidhi and... and uh, Gadadhar Pandit. At one point, Lord Chaitanya wanted to take sannyas, and he did. And he immediately, under, under the instructions, and not instructions, but out of the request of his dear mother, Sachi Manta, asked him to remain in Puri. He was originally going to go to Vrindavan, but his mother requested him stay in Puri. That way we can see you. And he didn't want to refuse his loving mother who appears to, with, to him in every manifestation of his appearance as her mother, as his mother. So he agreed. So he decided he went, he took sannyas and then eventually took up his residence in Jagannath Puri. Gadadhar Pandit could not bear the separation from Lord Chaitanya. So he also uh, took a kind of sannyas and came to Jagannath Puri also. Although he's known as an eternal brahmachari, a lifetime brahmachari, he took up what is called Shetra sannyas. Shetra sannyas means that you, you stay and you worship the deity in a particular temple for your whole life. You don't leave that deity. We can say that Pankajankri Prabhu and Janani Vas, they were also in that mood of Shetra Sanyas. They get dedicated their lives to worshiping Sri Sri Radha Madhava. So one who dedicates their life to a particular deity and serves that deity throughout, that is called Shetra Sanyas. Shetra means holy place. <laughs> So Gadadhar Pandit followed. Lord Chaitanya, after being there for a while, came across this beautiful deity called Gopinath. 
and he gave it to Gadadharpana to worship. And later it was installed in the temple. And the deity was known as Tota Gopinath because around the temple, there were beautiful gardens with many vegetables, fruit trees, and beautiful scenery. So Gadadhar worshiped that deity practically his whole life. But Lord Chaitanya had a desire to go meet Rupa and Sanatana Goswami in, in uh, Ramakali. So he decided to leave. Now Gadadhar Pandit was just besides himself with anguish thinking Lord Chaitanya is leaving. How am I gonna live without him? So he said, I'm going with you. How can you go with me? You have taken sannyas. No. Well, um, okay. Excuse me, my computer is giving me a little trouble here. Okay, so Gadahar, he didn't want, he, Lord Chaitanya didn't want him to come. Mahaprabhu actually wanted to go to Vrindavan. But Gadahar wanted to come also. When finally, when Lord Chaitanya was determined to leave, he decided to leave. And Gadahar was following behind. And the Lord said, you know, you're acting for your own selfish interest. You're not acting for my interest. You know, what will people say? You have taken Shetra Sanyas and now you're leaving your service. You're meant to stay here and worship Gopinath. And the Lord and then Gadadhar said, well, you are not different than Gopinath. And so if I'm with you, I'm also in Vrindavan. I'm also in Jagannath Puri. The Lord didn't like that explanation. And so he completely rejected it. The Lord insisted that you go. He said, if you abandon your duties, they will consider it my fault. I am responsible for the offense of you leaving Gopinath. I am going alone. You're not coming with me. Gadadhar said, anyway, I'm going to go and I'm going to go see Mother Sachi Nath Manta in Bengal. So he kept following behind and finally the Lord came to the Mahanadi River. He got into the boat. Gadadhar was there. Sarabhama Bhattacharya was also along. The Lord looked at Gadadhar one last time and then turned, got into the boat and left. <laughs> And then Gadadhar fell to the ground, he fainted. Sarabhama Bhattacharya picked him up and tried to comfort him. And he said, my dear Gadadhar, he will be back. Just be patient, be patient. Okay. So you can see just like the pastimes of Lord Krishna and Radharani and Vrindavan, how the Lord was leaving Radharani and Radharani was always feeling unhappy intense separation, not wanting for even for a moment to be separated from the Lord, but the Lord had his mission. And many times he wanted to, he had to break the hearts of his dear devotees in order to carry out his mission as he appeared in this world. And so that would break the heart. And finally, after some time, when the Lord was traveling, he came to Ramakali. He was on his way to Vrindavan, actually, and he met Bhupan Goswami in, in Ramakali. After meeting with them, and that was a wonderful exchange that's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita, he was about to leave to go. And Sanatan Goswami said, my dear Lord, you know, I don't think this is a good time for you to go to Vrindavan. He said it in a very simple way but direct the lord listened but then he turned around and he headed towards rindavan after the lord started to travel for a little ways he thought what sanatan goswami is right it is not the time to go to rindavan and so he turned around and he returned 
<laughs> he visited Kanaish Natashal also. That was both on the way and on the way back. Kanayatashal is also known as Rindavan in the Navadweep area. It's a place where there is much opulence and so there's many pirates there as it's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Finally, the Lord returned to Puri and everyone was happy. Gadadhar Panda was in ecstasy, the Lord had returned. One time when, after the Lord had returned, Nityananda appeared and he had some most quality, best of all, basmati, fragrant, long grain, the best of all quality rice. And so he gave it to Gadadhar Pandit. He said, here, Gadadhar prepared for Gopinath. And so Gadadhar gathered some leaves and some vegetables from the garden. And he started to cook. And while he was cooking, Lord Chaitanya appeared. And he said, Gadadhar, Gadadhar, you have, you have wonderful rice that is being offered to Gopinath. So I am here. So then after offering it to Gopinath, the three of them, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Gadadhar Pandit, sat together and Lord Chaitanya said, this rice is so fragrant. It has the fragrance of pure love of God. It has been brought by the, by the hands of Nityananda. It's been cooked by the loving hands of Gadadhar Pandit and offered to the Gopinath with devotion. And now we are all enjoying this, this spiritual treat. So he glorified. And then of course, Lord Chaitanya stayed in Jagannath Puri for 18 years. 24 years all told, but six of those years he traveled throughout the subcontinent of India, all the way down the, the uh, eastern side, back up to Cape Comorin, all the way up to the area which we know today as Bombay. Uh, it had a different name at that time. It was known as Vaipiana. That was the old ancient name of Bombay was called Vaipiana. The, when the, when the later on it got the name Bom, Bombay by the, but it was named Mumbai. Mumbai is the name that is given because there's one deity called Mumba Devi. She is the an expansion of Durga Devi, and she is worshipped nicely in Bombay. There's a temple there, beautiful temple, and so that's how the name came, Mum, Mumbai. But the British. When they heard Mumbai, they said Bombay, Bombay. <laughs> they changed it to Bombay. So that's where you get this name Bombay. Fortunately, we're changing it back to Mumbai <laughs> because Bombay is some British concoction. It's also near the bay too. And that's the only indication of any, any authenticity. But then Lord Chaitanya, he crossed India from that area towards Jagannath Puri and then we arrived and he was gone for six full years tra traveling and spreading the holy name everywhere he went and that's why it's said that Lord Chaitanya took Lord Krishna's holy name to every corner of the Indian subcontinent and made practically everybody Krishna conscious anyone who met him millions and millions of people met him chanted the holy names of the Lord and the Lord gave his special darshan. And there are many beautiful stories of his interaction with devotees as he traveled through the south, through the subcontinent, visited so many temples. But in total, he spent 18 years in the in Puri and six years traveling. That was the last 24 years of his life, the first 24 years. He spent <clears throat> as Nimai Pandit, as a student, in Sri Navadweep Dham. Now, uh, towards the end of his Leela, this is when Gadadhar Pandit was there. There was a, a big kirtan in the 
told to Gopinath temple and all the devotees were there, all of Lord Chaitanya's intimate associates. And the kirtan was going on and on and on. And it was reaching ecstasy. People were so absorbed in the kirtan that nobody, knowed, nobody noticed that at one point, Lord Chaitanya disappeared from the entire kirtan. He was no longer there. Everyone looked around thinking the kirtan stopped. They all looked, where has the Lord gone? He's nowhere. They went looking into the deity room. They went looking everywhere and around the area. No sign of Lord Chaitanya. Then they all were struck with a thunderbolt that hit them on their heads with full force. He has now disappeared. He has now left the world. And that was, there was a total anguish. There's a picture in, in Tota Gopinath temple and you can see all the devotees are practically falling on the ground crying, knowing that Lord Chaitanya had disappeared. And what he did was he disappeared into the leg of Gopinath. And today you can go and see that deity of Gopinath in the Tota Gopinath temple. There's a mark on his right leg. It's more, it looks like a, a cut or something. And they say, the Parjaris say that this is where the Lord entered the body of Gopinath and then disappeared. So that deity of Gopinath is non different than Lord Chaitanya. Now, Gadadhar Pandit was overwhelmed. He was ready to leave the world too when Lord Chaitanya left. But earlier, Srinivasacharya, the notice was given to Srinivasacharya to learn Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit. But Gadadhar Pandit used to read Srimad Bhagavatam all the time. There are many stories how Lord Gadadhar Pandit would sit and Lord Chaitanya would sit next to him. And Gadadhar Pandit would just read from the Bhagavatam. So sweet, so gentle, so loving. And Lord Chaitanya would be absorbed. And his two favorite pastimes were the life of Dhruva Maharaj and the life of Prahlad Maharaj. So sometimes Gadadhar would read the whole pastime. Lord Chaitanya would say, read it again. So he would then read it again. And then the Lord would say, read it again. So Vrindavan Das Thakur describes this in Chaitanya Bhagavad says, sometimes the Lord would ask him to read oh, up to a hundred times. The Lord was just absorbed in hearing Gadadhar Pandit read so lovingly the pastimes from Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is so deep in transcendental mellows of devotion that one who gets absorbed in reading of the Bhagavatam, who, who finds that good fortune of having the ability to get absorbed, will, will, will lose themselves in the, in the pages of Bhagavatam and forget about all time, all place. Everything will stop and it becomes just you and the Bhagavatam. So Gadadhar Pandit was so eloquent and so sweet the way he would read Bhagavatam that everyone would, the Lord Chaitanya would love to hear. And so Srinivasacharya was, had heard that Gadadhar Pandit knew Bhagavatam. So he wanted to learn Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit. So he had come to meet Gadadhar Pandit. But Gadadhar Pandit, he was, this was just after Lord Chaitanya left. When he was reading his book, he would sometimes cry, thinking of how Lord Chaitanya had been gone. And uh, the pages of the Bhagavatam were smudged. The ink was unread unreadable. So he gave his Bhagavatam to Srinivas and said, take it to the scribes back in Navadweep and have it recopied and come back and I will again speak Bhagavatam to you. But during that time when Srinivas Acharya was gone, Gadadhar Pandit was trying to continue his life, but it was difficult. It said that for every day that he was living, it was like one year of time 
time was going so fast in terms of his, what was happening to him. His body was aging one year every day. He was getting old fast. And he was almost like an old man, although he was only in his late 40s. At one point when he was trying to address Gopinath, and the deity is a big deity. And so he was reaching up, trying to put the, the heavy crown on the, on the head of Gopinath. And he was struggling to lift the crown up because he had deteriorated so much in age that it was being difficult. And so when Gopinath was seeing his, his devotee trying to put the crown on his head and was unable to do it, Gopinath did something. He sat down, <laughs> he sat down. The, the deity actually sat down in a cross-legged position. And today, when you go, that is what you will see. You will see Gopinath, who was once a large deity playing a flute, is now sitting playing a flute. And so just to please his devotee. But after some time, the pain of separation just like Radharani's separation from Krishna and Vrindavan is, was too painful to, for her to bear. The only reason that Radharani was able to maintain her existence in separation from Krishna is that Krishna had said, I will return. So based on that, those, those words given by Krishna, Radharani had the hope that someday she would see him again. Sometimes she was maintaining her, she was only maintaining her life based on those words. The ecstasy of separation was too painful. So Gadadhar in that same mood of Radharani, being Radharani herself, who could no longer bear the separation from Lord Chaitanya. And 11 months after Lord Chaitanya disappeared, Gadadhar Pandit also left the planet. And he disappeared on, uh, in Puri on the dark moon day of Jaist in the year 1456 of the Saka era, which is 1535 AD. Lord Chaitanya disappeared in 1534 AD. And the description in Bhakti Ratnakara of the ecstasy of Gadadhar's suffering is described, but it's very painful to read what he was going through. So many times it says that one can somehow bear physical pain, but the pain of loving separation becomes so strong that it's unbearable that one can no longer maintain their, their existence. And this was this, this was the situation with Gadadhar Pandit. So here, these are some of the few of the many, many wonderful pastimes of Gadadhar Pandit. Um, and so we chant, you know, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vansari Gaur, Bhaktivindam. And that <clears throat> sometimes it says that Lord Chaitanya is called the life of Gadadhar, and sometimes he's called the life of Nityananda. But both are true. And for devotees who are more inclined to Nityananda, he is. He is, uh, he is uh, Chaitanya Pran, or Nityan, he's, he's called Nityananda Pran, or no, Chaitanya Pran. The life of Chaitanya is another name for Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And other times he's called Gadadhar Pran, the life of Gadadhar. Bhakti Vinoda Kaur <clears throat> installed Gorgadadhar deities in different places. And there's one very famous set of deities in uh, Navadweep, just near our Krishna temple, right at the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya, the yoga pit. And you, as you go towards the back part of this particular compound, you come to a temple. And there's about three different uh, altars facing in three different directions. If you go to the far south part of the temple, you'll see this beautiful, beautiful set of deities 
called Gor Gadadhar. And give me one minute and I will bring you that picture of those deities and you can look, see it on the screen today. So let me know if you can see what I'm holding up in front of you. Yes, Guru Maharaj, you can see this. Very beautiful. These are the deities installed by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. They are called Gaur Gadadhar. So Gaur is on the uh, on our left side as we look at it, and Gadadhar is on our right side. Just like Radha and Krishna appear in that same position like that. So these are the beautiful deities called Gorgadadhar at the yoga pit. Okay, so. All right, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. And Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda is, it says that, you know, Virjendra Nandana Ye Sutsachi Sutu Hoilose Balaram Hoilo Nitai, that that same Balaram has appeared again as Lord Nityananda, and that same Krishna has appeared as Lord Chaitanya, so they're known as Gor Nitai. They are in Sakyaras, friendship, cowherd boys in Vrindavan. But here, Lord Chaitanya is in Madhuryaras with Gadadhar, Gadadhar being Radharani. Lord Chaitanya also had the internal mood of Radharani, but he always played the role of Krishna. So therefore we, Bhaktivedanta Thakur writes a beautiful, beautiful bhajan, um, glorifying uh, the, the deities of Gorgadhar. Because actually that was his worshipful deities because Bhaktivedanta Thakur is an intimate associate of Shimati Radharani, now known, known as Kamala Manjari in the spiritual world. And he appears as Bhakti Vinod Thakur in this particular manifestation. But he is an intimate associate of Radharani. And so he worships Lord Chaitanya as Gaur Gadadhar. So we find Lord Chaitanya is also exhibiting in Madhurya Ras with Gadadhar and Sakyaras, with Nityananda and Vatsayaras with his mother, Sanchi Mata. And uh, yeah, these are the three main Rasas. And then of course, Dasya Ras is always there, which he did, which he exhibited in relationship to many of his associates. So today is a very auspicious day in the appearance of Sri Gadadhar Pandit. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for sharing this glorious pastime of Sri Gadadhar Pandit. Really, really amazing, so sweet, full of nectar. Um, and Tota Gopinath, like deity, absolutely so beautiful. It was really, really. Yeah, it's a good fortune to spend a couple of times with yatras, with many devotees at uh, Gopinath Temple. Uh, we did panda, small pandal programs in the garden. The garden is quite big. And we also took prashadam there. So it's a wonderful place. And there's three altars. And on one, another altar, there is uh, deities of uh, Kalindi and Ravati, which are the consorts of Lord Balaram. They are there. And there's another set of Krishna deities there, which I can't remember the names. Three beautiful altars. But the main altar is Gopinath. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, if you have any questions, comment, or realization, uh, please unmute yourself, or you can type in chat window. I can read on your behalf. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.
Guru Maharaj, I have one question while devotee ask. Uh, see, like in Krishna Lila, Radha Krishna was so popular, like Radha Krishna and Krishna Balram. Yeah. Well, he was so popular uh, in whole, like the center of whole Lila. But in God Lila, normally, maybe my lack of knowledge. Uh, today, I came to know about Bhakti Bhlo Thakur, like he used to love this Gora Gadadha. But in general, it's mostly Gora Nitai. Why like not like Gora Gadadha so popular? Because we can't, we're, we're not worshipping them in that, in that rasa. That's a very intimate form of worship. We worship them as Gornitai. Because in that move, they're spreading the, 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 the Nam Sankirtan. And that is, and that is our focus. Gornitai is Krishna Balaram spreading the, the holy name around everywhere. Um, Lord Nityananda, he goes from place to place, sets up the marketplace of the holy name and distributes the mercy of the holy name to anyone who has faith. So that's the mood. This is the mood of our movement. This is the mood of our worship. We worship mostly Gornitai. To worship um, in the Midoriya Ras, there's a whole different, and that's not, that's for, that's for people on the Rasika level who are fixed on spontaneous devotional service. It's not for, for devotees in general. And generally, devotees don't worship Gaur Gadada. You know, it's very rasika. It's very intimate form of worship. Mm -hmm. And there's not much given to us in, from the Acharyas about that in terms of the, the process of that type of worship. Thank you. But the, but the pastimes we have here indicate yeah. Um, and Lord Chaitanya was always teasing Gadadhar. <laughs> he was always joking with him, just like, you know, Krishna was always teasing Radharani and joking with her. And Radharani was doing so many things like that. So that mood was there. But with Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya was extremely respectful to Lord Nityananda because Lord Nityananda was older than him and he was seen as the older brother. Although they would joke, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't so much joke towards each other. They would joke in general, you know. Lord Chaitanya was always glorifying Lord Nityananda. Jay, thank you, thank you, Guru Maharaj. It's yeah, but with Lord, with Gadadhar, the relationship was very Gupta, very Gupta. Gupta means secret <laughs> or hidden. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. So, Hare Krishna, dear yeah. devotees, if you have any question, you can please unmute yourself. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to you, Maharaj. Uh, thank you very much for this wonderful narration of the personality of Kadada Pandit. I have a question. Uh, you mentioned, uh, and I've heard this before as well, that he also has uh, so a part of Lalita Devi. Um, yeah. So how is that? And yeah. you can elaborate on that one. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, a liberated soul or those on the spiritual platform are not relegated to any kind of material rules and regulations. They can defy everything. So you'll see Many great personalities are a combination of more than one personality. 
is like Prahlad Maharaj in, uh, or Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur was a combination of Lord Brahma, Ruchika Muni, with the mood of Prahlad Maharaj. Mother Yasoda, different personalities come together as the Mother Yasoda who appears in this world. You know, uh, many of the great personalities are more than one personality in previous incarnations. So it's possible. Mm -hmm. More than one great soul makes up that one personality who appears in Gorlila. It's based on the principle that spirit is not limited, it's unlimited. If we think in terms of material laws, we get confused, how is it possible? Spirit is expansive. Spirit is non-restricted. Spirit is not within the three modes of material energy. <clears throat> a pure devotee can appear in many places at the same time. A highly pure devotee can do that. <laughs> So this is not something extraordinary. It's just the nature of spirit. You know? More than one personality will come together in one particular personality. And those two or three personalities will make up that one personality in this one Leela. Mm -hmm. They want to take advantage of coming together and getting the mercy of the Lord. So they, uh, they take that opportunity. So Lalita, there's an element of Lalita Shaki. If you read, uh, I think it's in the 10th chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita Ali Lila. Um, you can look it up. I'm not sure the exact verse. I think it's the 15th verse in the 10th chapter of Ali Lila. And there's a whole nice description of Gadadhar Pandit being a combination of Vrindavaneshwari and Lalita Saki. Uh, also. Thank you, Maharaj. I will, I will look that up. Thank you. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the verse, the 15th. Maybe you can put it up here. Yeah, there you go. Yes, it's here, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah, it says here, Sri Srub Dhamma has pointed that the shape of Lakshmi the, it was formerly very dear to the Lord as Shama Suntar Vallabha. Formerly as Lalita Shaki, she was always devoted to Sri Matirani Das. Yeah, so both of them have appeared together in the... And that was what we read from Gora Dhani, Gora, Gora Deshtipika. Thus, it says, Gadadhar Pandit is simultaneous incarnation of Srimati Radharani and Lalita Saki. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is clear now, Maharaj. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can't put limitations on a liberated soul. Liberated soul can go anywhere and everywhere and appear in many places at the same time. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I'm going to Srila Prabhupada and Lord's dear holiness. Um, Guru Maharaj, um, so um, we know that uh, now and due to, um, by hearing these pastimes, 
um, I can understand that uh, the Lord's intimate associates take uh, um, part in this in this leela, um, and because they are pure devotees and uh, they. Uh, because they are pure devotees, that's why they get this chance to, uh, or uh, that's why they will be taking birth uh, uh, to enact these pastimes along with the Lord. So, uh, Guru Maharaj, so, but as as a common man or a, or a common person, uh, how can we understand, like, uh, we, I'm pretty sure that um, we may not be able to reach that level of bhakti um, in one lifetime, several lifetimes it will take. So, how what should we learn from this um, these uh, other personalities other than Lord um, Guru Maharaj? So, I don't know whether my question is valid or not. But uh, well, what can you learn? Is this is the way it is? It's just accept it. Mm -hmm. This is how this is how the spiritual uh, scenario plays itself out. Different persons appear at different times in different manifestations. Uh, in order to assist the Lord in his pastimes. Some come to assist and some simply come to associate. You can do that too. If you want to, if the Lord is appearing somewhere and you know about it, you can pray. And if you're qualified, you can also appear in that pastime <laughs> in a particular but that requires, you know, pure devotion. This is just the way it is. It can't, it's not, it doesn't require explanation. It's just, this is it. These great personalities appear from time to time in different forms to assist and to associate with the Lord. The uh, Many of the demigods and Krishna's intimate family appear to, and as the Yadu dynasty, when Krishna was here, many of the Yadu dynasty were powerful demigods who came to assist the Lord in his pastimes. Others were his intimate associates in the spiritual world. The Lord always comes with his entourage. It's like a king goes from place to place. The king doesn't go alone. He's always with his ministers, his soldiers, his advisors. His, sometimes, you know, his uh, family members. The king travels or is, is always surrounded by others. So. The Lord is the King of Kings, and He's always surrounded by His associates. <laughs> yes, good morning. Thank you, good morning. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for speaking on Gadadar Pandit. And we understand that he is actually Radharani and Nagita. Um, my question is, the Lord's consorts in Gaurila, who are they, Lakshmi Priya and Vishnu Priya, um, who are they actually in, in this, um, in previous Leelas? Yeah, um, Vishnu Priya, the Lord has 16 principal energies and one, three of them are called Bhu, Nila, and the Bhu energy, the Nila energy, and the Kripa energy, or the Shakti Shri. energy, Sri energy, Sri. So uh, Vishnu Priya is the Bhu energy one of the uh, Lakshmi Priya, I'm not sure which category she falls into. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru
The Lord is unlimited. His pastimes are unlimited. <laughs> Anything else? So there is no question, Guru Maharaj, on the chat window. Okay, so I just, I'll make another announcement for all the devotees. Today is the uh, birthday of Janaki Nath Prabhu. Today is his 30, um, 36th birthday. And now he's uh, staying back at Bhaktivedanta Manor. His health is still quite precarious, but we want the devotees to offer prayers and also to give him best wishes on his birthday. Today is a day to uh, remember Janikinath. Those of you who know him uh, automatically develop love for him. He's such a lovable person such a serious and surrendered devotee. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you again. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday. And um, we'll speak some general philosophy tomorrow. And uh, on Thursday, we will have a, a Bhagavatam class. So, Lavanya, make sure you post. Uh, tomorrow is general philosophical instructions yes, good and, and also well, there's so many birthdays and so many marriage ceremonies and so many uh, <laughs> in india there's a there's a there's a celebration for everything you do so, so we wish everyone the appropriate celebration that's happening. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for giving a valuable time and association. Thank you very much. Yeah, Sri Devi is very enthusiastic to remind us of every celebration that is there. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to say happy wedding anniversary to Lavanya and Srinivas. So, Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Actually, it was yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, oh my mistake. <laughs> yeah. yeah, usually the husband forgets and the wife doesn't, but anyway, that's usually the case. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. All glory to Sri Gadadhar Pandit, Panchatattva Makam Krishnam. Bhakta Rupa Sarupa Kam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam Sri Gadadhar Pandit Ki Jai. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Vanchkalpa Taru Vishcha Krupa Sindhu Vivicha Patita Nam Pavne Vyu Vishnu Vyu Namu 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 Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shurdev Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.